Okay, everyone, so let's get started. Let's create our first pivot table and we'll kind of take the first one slow and then I'll maybe introduce you to some more function the features as we move on. So first of all, uh, thing we need to do is select our data. So um, you can pre-select it or you can have Excel kind of guess what data you want to use. Now, if you have it in a nice tabular format like we do, it should do a pretty good job. So let's see what Excel does with us. So first of all, where do you go to create a pivot table? It's under your insert. Now, if you're using a different version of Excel, I know if you're using the Mac version, it's under a different menu. So you're going to have to look, but it should be a pretty prominent um, item once you find it. It's, so it's in one of the ribbons and these are called ribbons, each of these. So your home, insert, page layout. Um, it's in one of the ribbons on uh, the Windows version. It's under insert. So we're going to start with a uh, pivot table and it's going to ask us a few questions. So first of all, choose the data that you want to analyze. So it, it already guessed it's, uh, you know, we were already, we had our mouse clicked within the data set. It recognizes we have a nice kind of um, squared off, if you will, data set. So it guessed, but let's double check. So let's see here. It went from A1, which would be your very first cell, down to R827, which is all the way over here. If we want to double, double check, we can click this up arrow. It'll sort of reduce this, and it allows us to select the data. So basically, we can start. Now, it looks like it did a perfect job. It went to the bottom, and let's just move this over a bit. If I can grab, uh, it might not let me right now because we're in the middle of this. But basically, it started right here. It went all the way across, which is the bottom of our data and up to A1. So it did a good job. Uh, I'm just gonna reselect it here since we're almost there. Perfect, now if we drop the arrow down, it'll bring back all our selections. Uh, just as a note, you could link it to an external data source. So maybe you wanna create a pivot table in one worksheet that's linked to a different worksheet. Um, obviously, it's a little bit cleaner, if you will, if your data and your pivot tables are all in the same workbook, but there's certainly circumstances where you might need to. Maybe it's somebody else's data set and they just want to give you read-only access to it and um, they don't want you to be able to download it nothing so you just have to kind of link to it for that reason just to create this uh, so that would be one reason so second question here choose where you want the pivot table to be report huh, where the pivot table report to be placed your best bet will almost always be a new worksheet so if you put it in the existing worksheet uh, it's going to try so it's basically going to add to this data table um, a pivot table as well. Now this data set is obviously fairly large. The last thing we want to be doing is navigating around trying to find our pivot table. So um, I would, I would, let's put it this way. I've never had a reason to not put it in a new worksheet um, where you might want to put, um, actually we won't even get into it. For nine times out of 10, you're going to want a new worksheet, if not 99 out of 100. Um, and then there's uh, additional um, information there. Choose whether you want to analyze multiple tables. We're not going to get into that um, for this lesson. So basically the defaults, it picked the right you know, data, new worksheet, we can hit OK. So you're going to see what it did. It created a, so here's our original data. It's called transaction detail. Uh, it created a new sheet for us. So looking at this, this is the start of our pivot table. So, you know, again, the the purpose of a pivot table is to take data in our in our master data set and start consolidating it and making meaningful reports out of it. So, you know, imagine somebody had told you, hey, I want you to uh, give me a total uh, list price amounts um, by offer status. Well, and you didn't know how to do pivot tables. Well, you'd have to manually, so you'd have to sort this, you'd have to break it out, you'd have to do the totals for each type. And then you'd have to kind of then probably just go and type that in on a different uh, page or you could link a formula. Uh, but th it'd be a little bit of work. Let's put it that way. So that's probably not your best report. I don't think too many people care about that, but maybe what people, so we talked about a few examples, um, you know, commissions by agent. So let's take a look at that. How would we do that without, you know, sort of manually doing something? So with our pivot table. So here's where our data is going to show up is over here. And here the pivot table fields is where we get to select what we want to do. So um, the best way to do this is to start building one and I'll show you along the way and then I'll introduce you and kind of tell you a little bit more about how to do it. So first things first, click in the pivot table, which we already are. If you click out, you'll notice the pivot fields disappear. So just click back in this box and it even says to build a report, choose fields from the pivot table list. Perfect. So here you'll notice because our data was in a very nice, you know, table format with headers, 
which is basically what you need it to be. Uh, the first thing is what fields do you want to include? So each of these is a column in our, uh, in our original data. Then basically we're going to tell Excel, okay, we're going to pick and choose some of these and we're going to basically tell it where to put them. So, you know, what am I visualizing? I'm visualizing a report that has each agent's name and has the commission amount right next to them, right? Fairly simple. So in our rows, we're going to want our agent's name and the value that we want to add up will be the commissions. Now we're not too worried about columns yet or filters and I will introduce you to those probably in the next video. Um, I do try to keep the videos to five to seven minutes. So um, let's go ahead and just do this one really quick. So let's see, where's our agent? So if you, you can do two things, you could just click the box and Excel will guess what you want to do. And it guessed right, it put it in rows. If you want to as well, you can actually drag it and put it where you want. So I'm just going to drag it here. Now we want commission, so commission amount. Again, we can click it and hey, it figured out exactly. We want the values and we want a sum of commission. You'll see that here. So congratulations, that's your very first pivot table. Now, um, one thing, when you do pivot tables, and there's kind of no way around this, it just, it doesn't format it. It just puts it in as like raw data, if you will, or, you know, just general format. Um, so you're going to have to format these. So the quick way to do that, you know, we'll just highlight this row. We're going to hit the dollar sign and there we go. Now I'm going to hit save. It's a fidelity issue. So I've already saved my data set out. Um, so I've obviously encouraged you, whatever data set you're working in, save it somewhere where you're going to remember it, give it a meaningful name, etc. So guys, I'm going to end this lecture now. When we come back, we're going to do some more work on this pivot table. You know, it's a great first start. Hey, we have each of our agents, uh, what their commissions were. Uh, let's make a bit more sense of this and make it a little bit more useful.